Hey guys, today in celebration of 4th of July, we're gonna be learning the science behind how fireworks get all of their beautiful colors. If you cut open a firework like this mortar here, which I don't recommend doing at home, we see that there is gunpowder in the base, which will propel the firework upwards, and then there's a fuse that goes to some more gunpowder mixed with these little beads. So once the firework is high enough in the air, the fuse ignites the gunpowder bead mixture, causing an explosion that propels the beads outwards and ignites them. And this is where the color comes from. The beads, or stars as they're called, contain different compounds, all corresponding to different colors. These compounds are metal salts, meaning they're made up of a metal cation and a non-metal anion. This copper sulfate, for example, is made up of a positively charged copper ion and a negatively charged sulfate ion. By dissolving some copper sulfate in some isopropyl alcohol and lighting it, we see it produces this nice green color, just like it would in a firework. But to understand how this works, we need to take a look at the copper ion on an atomic level. So we have our nucleus, and then around it we have our electrons at their different orbitals. Now all these electrons are at their ground orbitals right now, or their lowest energy orbit possible. However, if we add some energy to that ion in the form of heat, some of those electrons will go into a higher orbit, from ground state into what's called an excited state. However, those electrons won't stay in that excited state forever, and will drop back down to their ground state. Now the law of conservation of energy is always a thing, so when those electrons drop back down into the lower orbital, that energy is released as light. The wavelength of light that is emitted will be proportional to the amount of energy it took to bump up that electron one orbital. The equation E equals HF proves this, showing that higher energy will equal a higher wavelength. So a blue color comes from a higher energy change than a red color. Now quantum mechanics constrains the electrons to certain particular orbits. So every atom will have a couple different amounts of energy that are possible to be released, and these packets of energy are called quanta. If we look at an emission spectrum for copper, showing all the different wavelengths of light given off, each line corresponds to a different quanta of energy from a specific change in orbitals. These lines are called spectral lines, and for copper we see most of them are in the green range, and the green ones have a higher intensity because they occur more often, so that is why we see green light from copper. However, if we look at potassium's emission spectrum, we see that purple is the most dominant wavelength, and if I burn some potassium hydroxide, we see a purple flame. Since every element has a very distinct emission spectrum, sort of like a fingerprint, scientists can look at the light emitted from a different star or a different planet from far away and work backwards to figure out what elements it's made of and in what proportions. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys can safely watch all the fireworks this year and maybe understand them a little bit better. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoy creating this video, please do a like or subscribe. And thanks to all my lovely patrons who really make these videos possible. Thanks.